I'm really delighted to have Dr. Furhat Udin with us um, again today. Hi, Furhat. Hi, Joe. Last time that we spoke, we talked about HRT and what it was and what it could do for you. This time, we're going to talk about metabolic health. I want to kick off because we were just discussing the fact that research is showing that 80% 80% of chronic disease can be prevented. That's chronic disease in later life can be prevented by getting midlife right. That blows my mind. It's huge, isn't it, Jo? It, it really homes in onto the fact that we need to be thinking about our future health and acting now rather than waiting 20, 30 years into the future. Um, because absolutely what you just said, research does show that getting midlife right, getting our metabolic health on track in our midlife has huge ramifications down the line and can prevent all sorts of chronic disease. So what is metabolic health? Great question. And I, I think I struggle to answer this myself because I think it means different things to different people. So for some people, it's it's about their weight. It could be about weight gain or weight loss. To other people, it could be about balancing their blood sugars. Um, to some people, it's all about preventing chronic diseases like heart disease, stroke, dementia. But I think it's it's actually all of these things. It's about how our bodies um, metabolizes our sugars, our lipids, um, how we actually um, go on to develop chronic diseases or prevent them. And midlife is that time where our metabolisms start to shift. We see huge changes in our metabolisms that we're, you know, we're not really aware of, but we might be experiencing certain symptoms such as energy dips, uh, low mood, maybe brain fog, cravings, a weight gain as well. Metabolisms are starting to shift and it's, it's really now that we need to be working on them. Yeah. So that's sort of, you know, that, that midriff, meno belly, yeah. midlife tire, that's, that's a sign that our metabolic it's, health is changing. Absolutely. And, and estrogen, we know about all that, and we've talked about it in the last podcast, all the different symptoms that we get from our estrogen fluctuating, but we don't talk about how estrogen also affects our insulin resistance. So as our estrogen dips, we start to become a bit more insulin resistant. And what essentially that means is we need insulin to drive our blood sugars into our cells, into our muscles. And as we could become more insulin resistant, our blood sugars, well, we get these peaks, we get these dips, and we start to experience some of the changes that we feel on a daily basis. Mm. So am I right in thinking that metabolic diseases include things like diabetes, heart disease? Am I on the right, right lines there? Absolutely. So metabolic diseases include diabetes. We also talk about metabolic syndrome, which is it's a triad of raised triglycerides, high blood pressure, maybe you know weight gain and insulin resistance. So when we see all of these things together, that tells us, right, this looks like metabolic syndrome and you have a higher risk of diabetes as well as a higher risk of all of these other diseases such as heart disease, stroke, dementia. Um, so it's almost like a prelude to all these other conditions. Um, and, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, preventing now and getting that right now. So we have those future years that are more functional and healthy down the line. So this really is the time to to address those things. And, and the good news is that we can do something about it, which we'll talk about in, in, in a minute. So as a doctor, Furhat, I know that you deal with midlife women all the time. You prescribe HRT and you're now looking at metabolic health as part of your practice. What exactly do you do if a woman comes to you concerned about prevention? So I think every woman, as they hit midlife, so that's ages 40 and over, every woman should be getting a midlife check. And that includes blood tests for looking at their metabolic markers, things like their average blood sugar, cholesterol, lipids, getting a blood pressure check, and also looking at vitamin and mineral deficiencies because these become more common in midlife. So we see higher levels of things like vitamin D deficiency, iron deficiency, magnesium, and all of these things have a knock-on effect on how we're feeling. 
So for example, vitamin D, low levels can give you low mood, low magnesium, insomnia, low iron, hair loss, fatigue, brain fog. And these are things that we can, we can fix. You know, we can optimize in midlife. And these are also things that affect our future health. So really, really important to get right now. And then looking at these metabolic markers, calculating your heart age gives us a really good idea of where we are today, where we stand, what our risks are, and then talking about how we can mitigate these risks, how we can improve on our heart, heart age and really get, it, get us more healthy for our later years. This is really important, isn't it? Because it's important to remember that it's never too late and that we can do something about it, whatever age we are. So if somebody's listening to this and like me, they're in their 60s, it's not too late to go and get a metabolic health checkup and to make improvement. No, no absolutely not. So, so we know that these changes that occur, and they happen over decades, things like dementia, heart disease, it doesn't just happen overnight. So we think looking at the research, it's 20 to 30 years to develop something like dementia. So whatever age you are, these changes are cumulative. You can, even 10 years, 20 years into it, you can make those changes and reverse a lot of them. So yeah, absolutely, it's, it's, it's never too late. Wow. Wait, just circling back to what you were saying about vitamins and vitamin deficiencies and so on. You know, there are lots of formulations, aren't there? You know, sort of menno health kind of vitamin formulations and things like that. But it's a bit like throwing spaghetti at the wall. And yeah. you know <laughs> exactly what you're deficient in. You're just going to take all these supplements and rattle. I mean, yeah. I've, I've done it myself. You know, you rattle through your morning because you've taken so many <laughs> supplements, but you don't know whether or not you're taking them. Yeah. Right. So this is about targeted sort of treatment you can be on supplements and still be deficient you know I see women who are taking supplements and they will we will do a blood test and their vitamin d levels will still be low and and that's a sign actually you know some of these multivitamins only have very small amounts of certain minerals and vitamins and if you're someone like me who runs quite a low vitamin d you need you need bigger levels you need bigger bigger amounts mm -hmm. um so definitely getting your vitamin d checked is it over that, you know, the threshold is, is 25, anything lower than that, you know, you, you will start to get symptoms, but actually you will also be affecting your long-term health. We know that vitamin D, you know, we need it for so many things, including, you know, our cognition and our, and our mood. So that's a really important one to get right. Oh, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, we don't get an awful lot of sun, particularly through the no. winter. So um, you, can, you can increase it um, transdermally, can't you, by getting sunlight on your on your skin every day yeah it's just and it's not even a huge amount you need so they say that you just need to expose one forearm for 15 minutes in the day so actually it's not it's not a huge amount it's just making sure we're, we're getting that right and, and um, that even when the sun isn't out ideally when the sun's out but even if the sun's even if it's a cloudy day there is still UV light, there is still vitamin D being made. So it's it's still important to get some exposure. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because over recent years, we've, we've been taught to be afraid of the sun and worry about skin cancer and so on. And so if you put sun cream on, does that stop the vitamin D getting through as well? Or the, it does. Yeah, make it, it does. Yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you're right. So, I mean, that's why we, we say forearm. So I would you know, concentrate on an area that you can monitor. So for example, an arm is a really easy area to monitor, to look for skin changes. And actually, you know, I would say avoid maybe the peak of the of the sun and maybe go for the morning. If you can go out and, and have your morning coffee outdoors, that's ideal. You know, somewhere like your, your skin and your arms, you can monitor that for any skin changes. And really 15 minutes a day is not going to massively increase your risk of sun can skin cancer. When you um, put that against the risk of the d vitamin D deficiency symptoms, which which what, what are um, symptoms of low vitamin D? So definitely joint pains, mood changes. And we know that we need vitamin D for our immunity. So maybe, you know, a weakened immune system or allergies, bone health. You know, we, we get, we see more osteoporosis. We see more fractures in women. And a lot of this is, vitamin D is one of the factors towards weakened low, low bone density. So there's, there are lots of symptoms that you can possibly get from a low vitamin D 
And the really interesting one is that we know now that women who have a low vitamin D are much more likely to get dementia later in life. So optimizing your vitamin D, you know, you don't, you don't need massively high levels. You just need to get vitamin D in the normal range to protect yourself against those brain changes later on in life. Can you get it from foods? Yes. I mean, there's, there's not a huge amount of absorption, though, from foods. So you get a very small amount from certain foods. But the main, the main thing is really sunlight. So getting that exposure for 15 minutes a day is, is super important. And then, you know, supplements. Everyone, I think you're right. Those of us living in the Northern Hemisphere should be on a regular supplement for vitamin D, you know, regardless. All right. I take one through the winter, but I stop during the summer. Should you take them year round? Is it cumulative? I would, I would take it all year round. I would. It's, yeah. I mean, it's not going to do you any harm to take yeah. it all year round. I see. Right. I find all this really interesting because there seems to be so much new research coming out now. Have you, it's slightly off topic, but have you noticed that there is more research around women's health and midlife health more recently than there has been in the past? There is, there is definitely more research now, finally. I mean, I would say, you know, even as recent as the 1990s, all the research was being done in men. Mm -hmm. And we, women were actually excluded from these trials because of their hormones. And it was felt that we, you know, our hormones would interfere in the results. And actually, of course they do. And of course we're different from men. And it's only, you know, it's only recently that we're seeing studies are showing that women react very differently to men in terms of the way we react to medicines, drugs, our lipid changes, our risks. You know, we know that in midlife, women experience, a, you know, higher risks of heart disease, cardiovascular disease because of our hormones. So it's only now that we're really seeing that research emerging, which is, it's, it's better late than never. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It's, it is, it's out there. And a really interesting study recently was the Women's Healthy Aging Project in Australia and it was following women in midlife for 30 years to see how their health changed and how different factors affected the outcomes and yeah lots lots of interesting data that came out of that on how we can stay healthy and age healthy mm. which is so so important well, let's hope that, you know, that now the ball's rolling, that more and more will will be done to to find out. Now, I was talking to Sam Palmer, who, who we both know, who's a nurse, and we were talking about heart health. And she was saying women aren't small men. And that's yeah. how we've been treated, haven't we? All these years, we've just been treated like smaller men. And Absolutely. with people in the mix, it it's going to, you know, obviously change things, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we we present differently. Our symptoms are different. And when it comes to heart disease, and I'm sure Sam touched on this, you know, we we don't get the same large vessel changes that men see. We get predominantly we see small vessel disease. So our symptoms are different. So when we have a heart attack, we don't get that full blown pain in the chest collapse. We tend to get more subtle changes. And that leads to us being, you know, often dismissed mm -hmm. and not taken seriously, which is, you know, it's, it's awful. It really is. And then the meds, you know, the statins, they don't work the same on women. They work, they work differently. And, and so we're not seeing the same changes as men, as men do. And it's really important to recognize that. Yeah. Can we talk about statins just for a moment? Because I, I have read that the, they, they act differently on women's bodies to men's. Are they still as important for women to consider statins? I definitely think they play a role and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't advocate anyone, especially with heart disease, stopping their statins for sure. They, they just, I think for primary prevention, they aren't as effective as they are in men. And what we're seeing now is that the HDL, um, which is our good cholesterol, that's a lot more important. So rather than reducing our LDL cholesterol, which is what statins do, um, which is helpful, but it's, it's more helpful in men actually raising our HDL seems to be so much more protective for heart health and that we can do through diet exercise and lifestyle rather than necessarily taking a statin so yeah the, the benefits are there but they the benefits are less than they are in men yeah I see I see thank you I, I know that in your clinic Liberty Health 
you've been prescribing HRT and your service is, is fantastic, by the way. Ferhat is the doctor that I use for my, for my hormone therapy and, and so on. And the reason that I use you is because you give the time for a woman to go through everything, whereas a, a GP, as we have here in the UK, really doesn't have the time or necessarily the training. I know that you your training is as a GP, but you specialise, don't you, now in, in women's health and, and HRT. But you're now expanding into this area of metabolic health, which I think is a fantastic add-on to what, to what you're doing because you're looking at prevention rather than just replacing hormones. Can you tell me a little bit about why you've gone into that and what, what you're doing? Absolutely. Um, I think... Exactly that, Joe. I, I just felt like I'm scratching the surface often when, when I'm dealing with a woman who's going through the menopause, there's so much going on and HRT, don't get me wrong, it's important. It's not the whole picture. And time and again, it's about getting the holistic treatment for a woman right. And, you know, when you scratch the surface, there are all these changes going on that we need to be addressing. So what, what I do as part of my metabolic check is doing a blood test, making sure we got all the measurements so we know where we stand in terms of our metabolic markers, making sure we address any vitamin, mineral deficiencies. So it gets women feeling their best now, but also it, it gives, I give them advice on future health and how we can prevent certain conditions. And yeah, and we, we, work, on, we work on these sugar changes. We work on what diet, what lifestyle changes we need to make to balance our blood sugars how we can get our cholesterol or our good cholesterol up and yeah I think it's it's so important so it's a really important add-on to HRT mm. and it's it's a really empowering thing as well I, I know what I always feel so much better when I know that I can affect something and I've I've just taken a step from my business for three to four months over Christmas and, and up until recently to get my health back on track because I was really going downhill last year and um and and I'm 62 now and there was a little little gremlin in the back of my head mm -hmm. saying oh well this is the way it's yeah. going and actually and the reason I'm saying that is because I want people listening to know that you can affect it you know just mm -hmm. just going up and down the stairs I was going one foot after the other and I suddenly thought, what am I doing? And it's I basically I'd broken my ankle a couple of years ago and I hadn't I'd lost that muscle, you know, to so I had an up leg and I had a down leg. And I've been concentrating on on functional fitness. I can get up off the ground now, for example. I don't have to look for the disabled toilet because I can actually get down and up, more importantly, Amazing. without touching the seat in a public toilet. <laughs> And it's little things like that. You know, I was with one of my grandchildren the other day and she made a bolt and I, I actually broke into a run. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, you know, I had to have a lie down afterwards, but, you know, I wouldn't <laughs> been able to do that. I would have shouted for a stranger to stop her and then I couldn't stop. I picked her up and I go, look, look, I'm running. <laughs> Which, um, you know, she thought was hilarious. But uh, yeah, as long as she doesn't do it again, because that was, uh, that was <laughs> made my heart stop. You are a great example of how we can just take our health into our hands. You know, the fact that this is something we should all be prioritizing. We all say we, we prioritize our health or we, you know, we're going to we're going to change something tomorrow or we're going to work on our diet. We're going to work on our exercise. But it's today, you know, taking your health into your own hands today is so empowering. And it's it's you, your your later self will thank you your today self for making those changes that's a really wonderful way of looking at it because when, when you actually think you know the exercise isn't always fun eating healthily isn't always fun or saying no to that second slice of cake notice I didn't say no to the cake <laughs> you didn't say no to the first slice absolutely no. <laughs> it's got to be some balance here we've got we've got to enjoy things as well but it's, that's not fun. But actually, when you think to yourself, you know, I'm doing this for future me, and you actually sort of sit for a moment and look back and think, well, when I am looking back on my life, am I going to regret the fact that I ate that packet of biscuits? I'm sure I will. But I don't do it as often <laughs> as I used to. <laughs> going off, off topic now. The thing is, there is a cost to having all these tests and, and to have that advice. But once you've done that, You've got a blueprint then going forward into older age that Absolutely. is priceless, isn't it? 
Yeah, and you've got a benchmark. You know where you stand um, and you've got something to work towards. Um, and it might be that you need to say improve your cholesterol. It might be that you need to work on your blood sugars. But again, it's it's having that power and and having the right tools to do it is so so important. Yeah, yeah. And do you do follow up. So if if somebody came to you and they had um, their blood panel done and and you'd sort of you know worked out what deficiencies there were and and so on. And you, you know, gave them a program to help in, increase their age mm. cholesterol. Do they then come back and, and, you know, in a certain amount of time and have a another test so that they can see that difference? Because I think seeing the chemistry can really help. Yeah, for sure. So, so absolutely, you know, another blood test is really, really useful. But I mean, I recommend an annual check. Mm. I think every woman should have an annual check to see where they are. Is that is that blood pressure within the right range? Are there sugars in the right range? What's what's the trend? And, and you can have that done sooner. It doesn't have to be as far as a year. But again, just knowing where you stand is is really empowering. But how um, long does it take? If you start something, how how quickly does that have an effect on your metabolism? Not long. So I've seen changes within three months. So, you know, again, the, the blood sugar average that we take is an average over three months. So as soon as you start making these diet and lifestyle changes and, you know, we, we talk through how to do it. You know, we talk about the, the tricks that you can use to balance your blood sugars, how much protein we need to be taking on a daily basis, how much fiber we need to be taking. What the, what does that look like? Once you get all these techniques built in, you can see the changes within three months. HbA1c is looking at your average blood sugar over three months. And it's, it's, it's really nice to see actually, because then you can see that your hard work is actually paying off. Again, blood pressure within a couple of months that can shift cholesterol as well three months you start to see changes so it can be as early as three months I would yet yeah, like I said recommend getting blood test done maybe at six months or at least at another year that annual check is is really important and then going forward you can keep an eye on on how, mm. how you're aging and and almost reverse age by yeah. changes and these changes don't have to be huge um exactly with, with your guidance your telling people what to concentrate on so we're not throwing that spaghetti at the wall um, do you just deal with women because this would affect men as well yes so at the moment it is just women because of exactly my interest is in metabolic health in women at the moment but absolutely all the men listening out there you know it's equally important to get that midlife check and and on the nhs you can go to your gp and get these blood tests done and it's it's just as important so if they go to their G or any of us go to the GP, we need to ask for cholesterol check. Eight. Cholesterol, sugars, blood pressure, and these that's probably the, the bare minimum that we need to be looking at. And and yeah, just getting the right advice on how to, to make those changes. And then it is that regular monitoring. Where do I stand? What is where is my heart health? What's my risk of dementia? Really, really important. Of course, if you're if you're dealing with women, that they're going to take that information back to the family anyway, aren't they? So you're kind of treating a whole family if you treat a woman. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. So if anybody's listening and they'd like to uh, explore this further, do you have um, a website page or something that they can go to to look? Absolutely. So it's libertyhealthclinics.com, and there is a contact me page. And if you just put the midlife movement in there, you get a hundred pound discount at the moment for the next two weeks. So it, yeah, the midlife metabolic check is usually 350 pounds. And at the moment I'm doing it for 250. That, that's amazing. Does that include the blood tests? That includes everything. Blood tests, the measurements and the consultation with myself. Brilliant. I, I should say, because obviously this will be up, you know, it's an evergreen sort of podcast. We're, we're recording this on the 25th of April, 2024. So that for the next two weeks so until the end of April, you have this offer on. But it's always worth checking back as well. And, and do Absolutely. mention the midlife movement to let them know that talking to me today has, has reached enough people. Because that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about spreading the word that you do have that power and you, you can take it back with help. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'll put all your details in the podcast notes. Thank you for coming back again to see us. And I'm sure Thanks we'll for having me. see you again in the future. If you're enjoying this conversation, please, please like, share, subscribe, wherever you're watching or listening. 
this helps us get seen by more people and supports the Midlife and Beyond podcast. Thank you so much.